Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sosbidia Truner, welcome back to Crusader Kings 2. Well, last time, I'm going to be honest, I've no bloody clue, alright? Things just went a bit, uh, bizarre. So, Bulgaria got excited and just sort of ate France, not 100% sure how, but they did. And then beyond that, I'm going to be honest, I got overexcited too. We were just supposed to take Jerusalem, and I kind of started a great holy war and invited the entire empire to come along, and we sort of took the um, the entire east coast of the uh, the Mediterranean, which we don't need. We don't need any of that. That's all completely unnecessary, but I can't deny I felt good for having actually taken it over. That was fun to do, yes. And that means just one thing stands in the way of Rome, as it ever was. This feels somehow deeply appropriate. The one thing standing in the way of Roman resurgence is Carthage. And so, as the old saying goes, Carthage must be destroyed. But we've also got some, you know, internal problems to deal with. Like the fact that my children keep just, you know, dropping dead for some bloody reason. My siblings and my children and all sorts. So, uh, right now, lined up to be the next emperor is the unfortunately named, but pretty good, Harmonious the Frog. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, he's looking stressed and depressed right now, which is, uh, which is deeply worrying. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cheer him up by making him a happiness potion, which I can't do because I'm a stoic. But to be honest, yeah, the advantages of stoicism are sort of uh, wearing out a bit. Civilize is uh, not so great, to be honest. Diplomacy plus one is uh, nice, but not spectacular. The ability to, yeah, teach virtues and remove vices. That's fun. That's fun right there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to burn absolutely all of these points by just teaching as many virtues as I can to all my children, grandchildren, etc. We'll just get on with that nonsense and then after that we're going over to the Hermetic Society. Right, Dionysius, you're having a virtue and you get yourself kind good. That's a good one. Well done. Orpheus, I know you're just nine years old, but doesn't actually matter. Charitable, congratulations. Oh, also, remember how, um, Eris was in prison at one point? Yeah, uh, she's been, she's been burnt to death. So, not 100% thrilled with Count Constas of Genoa right now. Aphrodite, meanwhile, picks up the excellent Diligent, and Artemisia has now Diligent and Charitable. Though, unfortunately, Craven, though, uh, just as well. Okay, keep an eye on Artemisia, she could be something special. And here's a good idea. I'm going to invite my son carousing. I know that can potentially remove stress from me, but could it remove stress from him? I don't know, but I'm going to give it a go. Also, I'm highly suspicious because I'm a Stoic. Now, I don't know why we decided that being a Stoic was a crime. Like, this really shouldn't be a secret society. We just discuss how philosophy's cool. This should not be a massive secret thing, but screw it, let's go, want to join the Hermetics. Not for 90 days, mind, but you know, soon. And while we're doing that, yes indeed, we need to actually gather up a bit of money, and we're gonna do that by just burning down basically everything on our borders. So yeah, England over here, we're gonna take down all of this, lovely. And then we've also got a serves, hang on. How much do you have, bunny chance, my friend? Oh! Oh, nothing. Okay, we'll go and burn that in a few minutes too. Then once we're done with that, we might send a ship round over here and burn down the Netherlands. That sounds fun. We're still working on burning down Lyon at this exact moment in time. So yeah, we'll just uh, head around here, burn down the rest of Burgundy too. Good, 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 good. Plenty of stuff as needs to be burned down today. Though I may have been solid taking my eye off the ball of, yeah, the core empire right now, because I can't but notice there's... There's a lot of flippin' raiders around here. Right, deploy the retinues, deal with these bastards, please. And we will send Hermes himself to assist with this, actually. That sounds fun. And tragically, Harmonius does not want to come for dinner at mine, which is uh, very, very sad indeed. Still, if I can get a nice bit of battlefield or duel experience, that all works for me over here. So, yeah, not even a duel on this occasion. We're just cutting our way through them and... Okay, um, how in the name of Flip did we just lose? Okay, that's, that's a shame. We lost the captain of the guard and he was, he was actually really bloody good. Though he was, ah, 
Okay, maybe we shouldn't have sent him into battle, actually. He was 61 and infirm. Okay, fair enough, I suppose. You know what? The new captain's pretty good, too. That's all absolutely fine. Seriously, where have all these raiders come from? And also, uh, France, or like, fake not France. Why are you trying to take on uh, double the number of people? Okay, just wear them down for me. That's fine. Thank you. How are we doing over here, by the way? Is everyone in position now? Yes, everyone's in position. We're just doing a bunch of sieging over there. We're still doing sieging over here, and we're still doing sieging over here. Right, so we got five sieges going on simultaneously. That should be worth a... Oh, that's a lot of money, yes. And would you believe the raiders have decided to uh, wander off? Because I have now arrived with an actual proper army, so... Okay, you guys all just naff off, please, bloody hell. We're, we're winning too many fights, though. We're making really good money out of it, so fair enough. And... Oh, dear. No one came to my party. Missy, I didn't actually invite anybody, apart from that one guy, so fair enough. Also, something to watch out for here. Yeah, Bulgaria is starting to get a little bit, uh, big for their boots. This guy started referring to himself as uh, The Great, and is now officially uh, a malcontent. So, uh, watch out for him. He might be a little bit, you know, problematic as time goes by. I had such a good relationship with your father as well. Alright, England has sent in some reinforcements to assist, but honestly, yeah, there's there's not much you guys can really do about any of this. Also, that's 700 people behind a 1.6. Just go and take that over, please. Lovely, absolutely spectacular, and... Okay, hang on. Uh, who's this kid and why do I care? Ah, yes, my cousin Hippolytus's daughter's child. So, like, second... Second to great niece? I don't know, but sure, call him whatever you want. Don't care. Also, just out of interest, why are we... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Why are we not just ransacking the Pope? Like, all the time. Please get on with ransacking the Pope, because there's nothing you can actually do about it, so we kind of may as well. Oh, hang on. The Pope just actually raised his army, and because it had better morale than me, it actually just... Oh, just won. Okay, so... This is fine. Everything's under control. We will go and beat up the Pope's army and then we will ransack his city. It's going to be fine. Uh, deploy some, deploy some reinforcements to assist with that place. Oh, speak of the flipping devil, Artemisia. You are looking good. Pretty darn solid. Like, you know, not good enough I'd want you to be the next Empress because, uh, yeah, in particular that martial skill is uh, way too low. But, 20... 20 in diplomacy at age 16. That is remarkable. Well done. In fact, that does put her the joint most diplomatic person in the entire realm, which is magnificent. But unfortunately, yeah, I believe if you are Greek culture, women can be spy masters, but none of the other council roles unless you've actually passed laws about that. You know what? The laws are pretty much set up as I want to already, so next time that's available, we're gonna start shifting the status of women upwards a bit. After all, this basically just doubles the talent pool you've got to draw on for all of your council positions, so yeah, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really. Another one bites the dust, severe injuries, claims the Queen of Georgia. So the primary inheritance goes to Duke Ognan over here, who considers his primary title Alania rather than Bosnia, though yeah, he actually holds uh, both the duchies uh, together with a decent number of counties. There are a weirdly small number of uh, troops. Ah, they've just been weakened by war at some point. Okay, fair enough, you can have all the stuff back, no problem. Ah, but hang on, the Kingdom of Alania exists. Okay, so would I like to start splitting this out here? Hang on, uh, give me De Jure Kingdoms. Yeah, Georgia's supposed to be the down south bit. We could give, yes, yeah, someone up north the Alania stuff, and then people down south the Georgia bits. The problem with that plan, however, is, yeah, unfortunately, the vast majority of what ought to be Georgia is actually being squatted on by what was Bulgaria, but is now France, and also Armenia a bit, because Armenia have just got also a bit overexcited. Everyone just got overexcited last time, so... Okay, you know what? You can just have all of it. It's fine. The chap, however, has decided Delania is his primary title. So, yeah, as a result of that, we do have a change to the map once again. 
and England is already now suitably on fire, you are, excuse me, excuse me random raiders from Dorset, no, 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 step one, you guys come over here, and just trash this lot. Once you're done with that, go over here, trash this Yorkist army, and then, yeah, knock down this bit of land. You two, go over here, and actually, is this ready for... No, this bit of formerly France is still on fire, so you can actually go over here and... Uh, that's a peasant revolt. Okay, no need to bother myself with that. This country's still looking extremely weak. Right, you go over here, and you come over here and just basically, yeah, knock all of that down. May as well rob some of that while we're just, you know, stealing literally everything. 4,000 gold already. Wow, raiding is good. Ah, uh, yes, and don't forget, right now France is also trying to take over Burgundy. Though that is the Duchy Burgundy, not the whole kingdom of Burgundy. So, uh, not sure what they want, but I'm sure they'll take something. Also, England got bored and stopped trying to, you know, defend their own territory in France. So, screw it, we'll just burn this bit down too. Okay, big moment. Prince Dionysius. He needs an education and... Ooh. Okay. Bit of an all-rounder here. He's got, yeah, points in various directions. But... Okay, unfortunately, his natural aptitude would be towards uh, diplomacy in terms of base. But... Yeah, Fussy doesn't really work in favour of that. Okay, we'll give you a stewardship education. That's all absolutely fine. And right now you're being tutored by me. I do have a level 3 stewardship education. But... You know what? Yeah, level 3 is... That's good enough. I'll continue tutoring you myself. Okay, bigger army of 10,000 men. Let's try burning down the Pope's house again. This time with full morale so he can't raise his troops. And my wife apparently just died of natural causes age 48, which is a little suspicious, actually. 48 seems a bit young, unless she had, like, a, a massive underlying health problem. She did not. Okay, either that's not as natural as people are saying, or I was just really... Really unlucky. Okay, who wants to marry the bloody emperor? Someone good has to want to marry me. Okay, no one's desperately jumping out at me, but there is someone over here, a princess of Wallachia. She's got a good selection of stats to help me rule the empire and uh, lustful. So we might be able to get out a handful more children before I kick the buckets. And Hermetic Society is off cooldown, so yeah, let's get in there as fast as we can, please. That's just lovely. And yes, I need to get up to brewing the potion of Aedemonia as fast as possible. That's going to need 750. Right now, that's zero. But learning and diligent means I'm going to be picking it up fairly quickly. Okay, intrigue. Let's get straight over to writing a theorem paper, please. And with my high diplomacy skill, yes, I can get help from everyone around me without threatening to pick up stress for myself. Um, guys, can't help but notice you're not currently burning down the Pope. Is there a reason you're not burning down the Pope? Because you're supposed to be... Okay, for some reason they don't want to burn down the Pope. Also, I quite like that the Pope's only remaining city is a heretic stronghold. Love it. Okay, so it's happened again. Harmonious is also dead, but this one is suspicious circumstances. Somebody wanted him dead, and I don't know whether 10-year-old children can start murder plots, but I am very bloody suspicious of you, Orpheus. Okay, now I have lost two children to ridiculous events early on. So yeah, you had a heart attack age 20. You were just straight up murdered. Then... Dionysius. Okay, as a stopgap, would anyone be willing to back Princess Artemisia? Because she's really, really bloody good at her job. So, would everybody like to vote for her, please? Also, Orpheus, the one child of Apollonius, just became really bloody important. As does the fact I need to... I need to pop out some more children. I need to start popping out some more children. Like, right now. So... Okay, how's my health? My health is fine. For the time being. That shouldn't be a problem. So, okay. Let's go over to seduction here. Let's do some fertility. Some sex appeal. Some... Then again, intrigue doesn't really work for me. Yeah, okay. 
Um, maybe we should just stick with, uh, stick with family and just try and get some children out of this wife. Yeah, you know what? This wife should be good. She was actually lustful. So, focus on that. That's all absolutely fine. There's no valid ambition for me anymore. Okay, I've also inherited the kingdom of Antioch. Oh, bloody hell. Right, so you're temporarily the heir, but that's probably going to change. Um... Okay, who wants to, like, run the Kingdom of Antioch these days, by the way? Because uh, I believe... Who the cock are you? I don't know who you are, but apparently you've taken over or something. Ah, yes, of course. Duchess Anastasia has taken over as Duchess of Jerusalem. She was the only daughter of Harmonius. So, okay, perfect world. We need to get you hooked up with somebody good from my dynasty. Though obviously not someone too closely related to my dynasty, because you're of my dynasty, so... Okay, uh, matrilineal. Actually, we just need to get you a matrilineal, so... Okay, how do you feel about, like, whoever this guy is? This guy's gonna be great, whoever he is. And, yeah, matrilineal, you'll go for him. Marvellous. Also, congratulations, you're just gonna be the Queen of Antioch because you've got the most troops and I kind of want you to maintain the power. So, have fun with this. Could have given it to Strategos Tim as well, but screw it, it's going to the kids. Ah, but here's something I wanted to see. Yes, I've been investing in the bloodline of Alexander and it's come good. So, I've achieved my goal and officially managed to con everyone sufficiently that I'm related to Alexander, despite the fact that, you know, there's clearly no connection whatsoever. It was all made up. But, I spent enough money and enough prestige on it that people are willing to accept this. So, that is presumably a brand new bloodline for me. Oh, that's looking good. That's looking good. Okay, so, 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 so. Two sets of blood now run in my veins. Hey, run the wise, the great, the mighty, giving me plus 10 to personal combat skill. Smiths apparently strive to please me, and also monthly prestige plus 0.1. The immortal blood of Alexander the Great, meanwhile, is wow, also only personal combat skill plus 10. It is now canon that Payrun was as good a warrior as Alexander the Great himself, which is amazing. So, Old Hellenic and Reformed Hellenic Opinion up plus 5, that's very useful. Levy Reinforcement Rate plus 15%, that's good as well. Prestige only up by 0 0.2 versus 0 0.1 for Payrun, so yeah, Alexander's barely any better than Payrun the Wise. And Invasion, once per lifetime. Ah! I've never done this before, but I've heard of it. This is basically, yeah, you just sort of point at a kingdom and say, hey, I'll be having that now. You don't need a claim or anything. You can just sort of have it. Though, admittedly, I can do that with Great Holy Wars anyway. So, okay, now I can just point anything anytime I want and say I'll be having that duchy with a Hellenic normal Holy War. Great Holy Wars every 25 years or so to take an entire kingdom and an invasion once per living emperor, where I can just say, hey, that kingdom over there, that place, and anything else you occupy. Anything you've got occupied at the end of the war, you just get to keep if it belongs to the person you were attacking. So you can just, you know, paint the entire map your color relatively easily. So, okay, 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 okay. Italy, Germany could just have all of that, but okay. It's a nice thing to have. Whether I want to use it right now is another question because, uh, yeah, presumably if you want to take over the entire country, that means to get 100% guaranteed victory in the war score, you'd have to take the entire country. So you might be better off going for a more modest Calcis Belli if what you want to do is, you know, more modest. So, okay, it's nice that we're now officially the heirs of Alexander the Great. That's good at least. Also, here's something interesting going on in Northern Europe. So, England and Ireland are actually backing a pretender who's trying to take over an entire kingdom. So, not sure how they got involved in that, but they did, so that's nice. And Germany's keeping itself occupied with problems up north. Good, so Catholicism's not really paying attention to me at the minute. Marvellous. Okay, Dionysius, no pressure, but you kind of have to be good now. Like, really good. And wife, no pressure on you either, but we really need to have some more sons. Like, right the flip now. Here, have some money. Please like me. I'm going to send her a really nice bottle of wine as well, just to break the ice. Marvellous. Up to 68. Love it. 
Okay, good start. My wife's immediately asked me about the affair that I am having because it produced a daughter that I publicly denounced. So, okay. Yeah, can understand why that would be a problem, but I'm going to be honest, I need to... I need to hedge my bets. Yes, I'm just gonna lie to her, and we're gonna see if she, um, if she's willing to accept that or not. And this raiding army is just refusing to attack the Pope, so okay, fine. You get saved on this occasion, your popiness, by some form of bug. I hope you're very happy. Okay, and enough people are willing to back Artemisia for the moment, so okay, this is good. She'd be a very different Empress, but she'd do the job, and she's She's pregnant, despite the fact she's unmarried. Artemisia, please, come on. Okay, with no further questions, my theorem paper is apparently complete, so we'll see if that's good enough to make it into the archives or not. And we have ransacked a noble scepter from one of the castles I was just actually uh, storming through, and it's really not that noble. It's kind of awful, actually. My existing scepter is, you know, much better. Admit I'm not sure why I'm in a rush to get up to level 2, given the guy I was trying to cure of stress is now, you know, dead. But may as well just try and write another book before I die, I suppose. There we go, learning plus 2 for- wow, learning plus 2 for 5 years, not bad at all. 100 knowledge and 75 prestige. Good, 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 good. And as for you lot, please get out of my- ooh. Okay, that's- that's not me. Well, that's just bloody unfortunate. Okay, the votes have just swung in favour of my father-in-law, the father of my current wife, who is, yes, the King of Wallachia, and also a commander. Unfortunately, yes, the votes are just, just in his favour. So right now, we do not have the Imperial Throne locked down. Okay, once again, Dionysus, no pressure. No pressure at all, but seriously, be good. And Anastasia is unfortunately producing bastard children, except, hang on, is it officially... No, have you just recognised that child and made it part of... No, tragically not. It has just moved out of my house. Okay, please keep it in the house. We need it. And no, you're not getting any more counties. Also, French Revolt. Ooh, French Revolt. Okay, hang on, where's the French Revolt? Oh, it's those two counties. Okay, so it's not exactly a big deal. That's a shame. You know, Central Europe's really starting to come together here, by which I mean plenty of it belongs to me. Bohemia's about to get itself eaten by one of my vassals. They're going into Bohemia, just to claim all of that. Germany's looking very, very powerful indeed. Yeah, France is slowly being consolidated into me. This territory's going to be eaten sooner or later. And I can't imagine Italy's going to accept Romaine's existence for too much longer, given Italy is like six times stronger, so... Okay, Europe is actually vaguely coming together. Oh, and here's fun. There is actually an uprising of heretics right here in the Pope's only remaining city. Go on, drag him out, kill him. No, never mind, they're voting for Artemisia again. It is, this is hanging in the flipping balance. Though yes, I can't make Artemisia despot unless there is notable or full status of women in effect by the loopsy of it, so... Yeah, I can't actually get her in play. I can mark Dionysius out as the likely next guy. Ah, here we go. Though she's my daughter, not my wife, Augusta is just for the second most important person in the Empire. So, I can mark Artemisia out as Augusta. That might help her along a bit. Okay, one of the biggest voters is Joseph. So, we need to get him on side. Ah, yes, of course. The Mysticos and the King of Croatia. Thought I recognised that name. Right, you, my friend. I'm going to be needing you to uh, support me. Ideally by letting you... Oh, bloody hell, he doesn't actually... Uh... Yeah, he doesn't want to sell me a favour. Not even for a thousand gold. Okay. Um, Need to find people who are willing to accept bribes. Right now, I'm guessing this guy's eligible because, yes, he's a commander. So we could just strip him of the rank, but honestly, he's... He's a good commander. You know what? We've got enough commanders. All right, that's fine. You are being stripped of your position, my man. And the new despot of France is actually, yeah, not terrible. 12 together with inspiring leader and strong. 
Okay, I feel like people are just going to start voting for him instead, but screw it. We'll see how it all kind of, uh, how it all shakes out in a moment. And there we go. And people are getting behind the leader of Corinthia instead. And also some random person. We can be friends. That's fine. Okay, the vote is split enough so that, oh, not many people are backing. Nope, nobody's backing her. Okay, Corinthia's, Corinthia's now in charge. Oh, bloody hell. Okay, don't panic. He's 63. He's not going to be around for too much longer. Though clearly too many people like him. Okay, you can't be commander either. Okay, everybody vote again. Everybody just vote again and keep voting until you vote the way I want you to vote. Okay, now that, that's looking like a good split vote that works in my favour. Okay, as long as we've got a candidate ready to be the next emperor or empress in case of emergencies, like, you know, me just suddenly dying, that's fine. Also, are you actually planning to come and attack me right now? Yep, I think Burgundy's decided to, to come and try and deal with me. So, okay, time for my new commanders to go and prove themselves. Love it. How's my wife doing, by the way? Suspected adultery. Yeah, she's not 100% thrilled here. Okay, this fight should go fine. I've got the numbers advantage, the commander advantage, and the terrain advantage. So, Burgundy should be in a lot of trouble. Oh, they brought in reinforcements. Okay, never mind. That's fine. We did a lot of good work to Burgundy. It's A-OK. -okay. We stole a lot of money from Leon when we burnt it to the ground. Probably best we, you know, start wrapping all of this up. So, we have had a few losses, and more people are coming in, actually. Uh, combat is... The King of England is coming in. Well, to be honest, I can't blame him for wanting a bit of revenge. Where... Where is he? Oh, blimey. Okay, King of England, 6,000 troops. Okay, that's a lot, actually. Uh, okay, once again, try sending some of my best commanders to back up. But yeah, my forces are being very much chased out right now. We might need to uh, chill out and just let them recover for a bit. Okay, so I'm glad we caught this one. At least we've got a chance. And this one's looking close, actually. And no, it's looking like it's going badly on that flank and badly on this flank as well. Actually, it's going badly on both sides of this flank over here. And does anyone know where England went? Because, guys, we were having a battle. Oh, I think we were only having a battle because we were conflicted over the fact we were both hostile to this nation. But a war's over, so we decided, you know what, we don't we don't have to fight anymore. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we just decided we weren't at war anymore. Just midway through the battle, someone ran out to the field and said, Guys, guys, does anybody know why we're fighting each other? No, I, th I thought you were attacking. No, you were attacking us, were we? Okay, guys, I'm so sorry. Let's, let's go back to not doing any of this. This is fine. Ah, and here's an important one too. Orpheus, who could yet be the emperor, because God only knows what's going to happen next. So, okay, he does have maybe a push in the direction of military, all right? Give him the martial education. Get him a proper tutor for this sort of a thing, all right? We need a proper tutor. Here we go, you my good man. So you are, yes indeed, a duelist, a direct leader, a brilliant strategist. Teach him everything you know. But hang on. Out of nowhere, as a potential next empress, Princess Aphrodite has got some very good stats for a 12-year-old, including 9 Marshall, with a base of 6. Alright, so we're going to be giving her the Marshall education too, with the new tutor, who is very good at teaching the Marshall. Okay, at this point, I've no bloody clue who the next emperor is, alright? It's somebody. Somebody related to me. That's literally all I know. Okay, all raiding levies have been stood down, but we now have over 6,000 gold, which means in an emergency, I can basically hire every single mercenary in the world, which is absolutely bloody magnificent. So, okay, that's a useful thing to be able to do, just in case that's needed down the line. Next, my vassals just need to recover, so 10,000 troops need to grow back, and also, yeah, I've just actually uh, sprouted some new retinues, just a handful of heavy infantry and archers, so they need to grow as well. And when I say grow, they're not actually reinforcing at all right now, so, okay, let's make that happen, that's gonna be, okay, that's gonna be expensive 
to do, but that's fine. These guys needed to uh, regrow a bit anyway. So, okay, I'm about to knacker the economy, but that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. The reason that's A-OK -okay is because we just stole 6,000 gold from other people who were too stupid to defend it properly. Okay, everybody's happy with Artemisia, and when she grows up a bit and is a bit older, they'll be even happier, because part of the reason they don't like her is she's a bit too young right now, age 18, but she'll be fine. She'll be okay if she can stop having bastard children anyway. Please stop having bastard children, all right? People like the diligent and the just thing. They're not going to be so keen on the multiple bastard children thing. And Corinthia's on the march against Romaine as well. Honestly, guys, I kind of wish you, you wouldn't actually. We're already threatening enough without you guys causing more flipping trouble. Then again, does it really matter? Like, at this point, yeah. At 5% threat, when I attack Carthage, the Islamic world's coming for me. Over 50%, then, yeah, the other religious groups are coming together, with the exception of the pagan one, because I'm part of the pagan group. So, over 75%, the pagan ones are coming as well. But honestly, who's even in the pagan group? Does that even matter? Oh no, not Devon. Please stay away from me, Devon. No, no, please stop. Admittedly, hang on. Devon? That means, oh no, independent Norse Devon. Unacceptable. They've stolen half of Cornwall. Still, it is nice to know that at some point in the history of Cornwall, there was Gilbert the Wise, who actually created the petty kingdom of Cornwall. So that's nice. And my wife's pregnant, so we might have another shot to son yet, if we're lucky. And here we go. The advantage of me tutoring Dionysius himself, I get the big age 14 intervention moment. So, uh, okay. I can give him patience. I can give him diligence. I can give him ambition. Is there any chance he's going to get any of that by himself? He's always a bit wrathful. That's, that's not so good, to be perfectly honest. Then again, it's... It is Marshall plus three, which is kind of good. Fussy can become... Uh, that could become patient all by itself. Idolizer, that could become erudite or frail, which would be bad. Okay, so he might pick up patient by himself. So there's no point in me taking a risk to give him patient. Now that looks like that would actually get rid of... Uh, yeah, that would presumably get rid of Roth. Okay. Roth is not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible... For you're not a military leader, you're getting a financial education. Right, yes, okay. Screw it, he's getting bitter rivals, there we go. He's probably going to kill me now, but ambition is just so damn good, especially as he is now my oldest surviving son. So I suspect a lot of people are going to want to vote for this kid as soon as he hits 16. Also, I've just realised I'm down to nine domain because I accidentally, yes, gave the girl all the subregions, including uh, this area down over here, which I shouldn't actually have given to her. By the way, would you like to have the uh, Tripoli Emirate? Because I just got that. I kind of reclaimed it off somebody. And the Hellenic, Russian, French are on the move again, this time just to lock down this central bit of France, which is uh, not too surprising. I suspect we'll be seeing a few holy wars just to uh, mop up some of this territory as time goes by. Also, I just wanted to go over to the religious map for a moment because, uh, yeah, Hellenic is now... Uh, is it the biggest religion in the world? No, I'd say Sunni Islam is probably bigger, at least in terms of geographical area. But in terms of population, it is entirely possible that Hellenism is now the biggest religion in the world. Really could have done with a son, to be perfectly honest, darling. Really needed a spare son. This is now my third daughter to one living son. This is not ideal. We're also starting to run low of major Olympians, so she's going to just be named after Thetis. So say hello to Thetisia. Though speak of the devil, yes, I'm now 50. I'm starting to get on a bit. So because of my personal combat skill, I can say no. I shall be a warrior. I shall train. Or I can just become a jovial patriarch, eat more, but also, you know, potentially pop out a couple more children, or I can go on a diet. I'm going to be honest, the important thing now is, yeah, children. All right, I shall become a jovial, rotund patriarch. It shall be great. My wife has immediately stepped in to say, oh, no, you flippy don't. Marvellous. Um, okay, so if I go on a hard diet, 
That's going to... Oh, it's immediately going to get rid of Jovial Patriarch. I'm going to be honest, no. Alright, I'm enjoying eating all of the biscuits. Okay, I've now eaten a sufficiently large number of biscuits that there is a lot of me to love and everybody is fond of the new me. Admittedly, my wife just tried to stage an intervention, but let's just overlook that. Apparently, my relatives like me because of the biscuit eating. And honestly, I'm still actually not a bad fighter, all things considered. Also, following the birth of our latest daughter, my wife is apparently overeating. Honestly, I cannot judge. Like, seriously, I just made the conscious decision to become Captain Biscuits. So, I'm not gonna get in my wife's way if she also wants to have a biscuit. But we're also just moments away from Dionysius hitting 16. And at that point, yes indeed, we are gonna have ourselves, potentially... A brand new air, please, please be good. And actually, he's picked up Erudite. Erudite is uh, not bad, not bad at all. We just have to wait and see what Fussy actually matures into. Though, honestly, none of those are bad. Patient is good, Greedy is not terrible, Paranoid is okay. Fussy's generally pretty safe. Though, hilariously, it would now appear that, yes, indeed, even my vassals have got powerful enough to have their own personal flipping defensive packs against them. So, uh, yeah, it would appear everybody else has shown up to uh, help this small, tiny French territory defend itself from France. Which I welcome, alright? That guy was starting to get a little bit dangerous. Oh gosh, flipping darn it. Level 2. Despite the fact my education is level 3, he's only a level 2 education. Okay, but... But, 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 chance of diligent or gains paranoid. Okay. No. We've got to take the gamble and also... Okay, it's not the worst beard at the bare minimum. We've got to take the gamble for diligent. And did he get it? No, he got paranoid instead. Okay. I mean... He's not terrible... There have been worse people in the world. Not many, but there have been, presumably, somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, Aphroditea, at this point, I'm mainly interested in how you turn out, because, uh, wow, you are brawny, you are diligent, you've got curious and willful, those are both really, really damn nice. In fact, actually, because you've already got past, yes, she can't become dull. She already got brawny in place of dull. Thirteen. 13, age 14, Princess Aphrodite, I think we might need to... Okay, hang on, hang on, to the laws, to the laws, we need to make women legal or whatever. Okay, it's gonna take a bit of time, but screw it, this is all absolutely fine, we'll just start moving it in the right direction. Oh no, here's interesting, an opportunity might be about to present itself. We've got ourselves, yes, yeah, someone who's only just come of age... Uh, on the throne of the Idrisid Empire. And it would appear that I think, yeah, he's now heading south. He's trying to actually invade and take over some of this African territory. And these guys are pretty strong. These guys have been going well. They've pulled themselves together beautifully. They're not nothing. This is the time to start making some trouble. Okay, all troops appear to be in good shape right now, all things considered, absolutely lovely. So, it is time to, once again, send about 15,000 troops to go to go and sack the coast of Carthage. We are now coming very close to the major invasion, and when that happens, it's gonna have to happen damn quickly, because, yeah, when it does, literally the entire world's gonna turn on us simultaneously. Now, arguably, let's talk all about the things that John got wrong at the very last minute, which is, yeah, what I should have done is a basic holy war to take Jerusalem, and then I could have done a great holy war for the final war, because then everybody else would have jumped in and helped me out. But now it's just my own troops versus the world, and that's gonna be a lot more tricky to do. Also, apparently my wife's actually been, um, plotting. Okay, hang on, it's been a while since I've checked out the plot screen, because generally I just let people get on with plotting. But what have you been plotting? Okay, it's some random guy. Some just completely random guy, don't care. But, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is a good excuse, because 
To be honest, I feel like we need... Okay, desperate times, desperate measures. Oh, I didn't actually need to throw her in prison. I could have just actually, um, paid her off. Okay, that's much easier, but now, now she's, now she's in prison. Okay, um, so, well, now it's just kind of embarrassing. I can, I can declaim her poetry. Okay, wow, because I'm a poet, I can just read poems to her. Yes, 100%. She is forced to spend a full hour listening to my guards reciting- Okay, I don't do it personally, my guards do. Reciting my most atrocious poetry, not only is the brute butchering the rhythm, you made certain this particular poem contains the most contrived metaphors, 5% chance she might become a lunatic. No, she did not on this occasion. Okay, so, 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 so. I'm gonna be needing a new wife. Now, I can't reliably get these women pregnant, so what I need is a master seducer. Because that way, I know she'll just be having children with somebody else. I don't care. I just want children. Okay, I didn't find one, but I'd just like to draw attention to this individual, who is stressed, drunk, one-eyed, a master seducer, who is lustful, and also ugly, and a dwarf. We should have been following this guy, because this guy's got the best story in the entire bloody game right now. He is amazing. I love him. In fact, I can invite him to court, because literally there is a position. Court Dwarf. Come to my court, my man. Welcome aboard. Here we go. Midas touched. Plus 15% fertility. Lustful. Plus 20% fertility. Good. Good, good, good. Welcome aboard. I know you're officially the, the wrong religion. We can fix that. It's fine. Right, most importantly, this guy becomes my court dwarf, the coolest guy in the world. And this woman becomes my wife or whatever, I guess. I mean, we've always had good luck with Russian women in the past, alright? Russian wives have always worked out for us. Oh, you see, look at that hat. This was meant to be. And we nice and easily flip her over to Hellenic 2. Right, okay, seriously... Children, let's get out one more son, just because, yes, we've had this has been one hell of a roller coaster. So, Apollonius, who was looking fine, then died of possibly suspicious circumstances. Harmonius, who died of definitely suspicious circumstances, after looking really, really, really damn good. Artemisia, who is currently in line to be the first ever empress of the empire, who's looking pretty solid, if not necessarily a military leader. Dionysius, who's looking... Sort of okay, if not particularly spectacular. And yes, Aphrodite, who in two years might go on to be a bloody warrior queen. And on top of that, who bloody knows how Orpheus is going to turn out? He's stubborn, which is uh, not spectacular, but what can you do, eh? Also, I'd like to draw attention to the fact that this kid has just picked up Lustful. His birthday is literally Valentine's Day. That's probably a coincidence, but it's a fun one. Okay, their birthdays are about two months apart, so yeah, we're gonna get two very important bits of news in rapid succession about these two. Still, let's put that aside for the time being. We need to begin the prevasion of the Idrisids. And the King of Armenia has died in war. So that's fine, because he was sort of the wrong religion, to be perfectly honest, so that's a okay. Need to find ourselves somebody new. Now you, you my boy, who just inherited everything, you appear to be, yes, a good lad, a good Hellenic lad. Congratulations, you can have everything. Okay, teams of 15, 16,000 ready to go. Everybody move into raiding stance, please. Everybody get aboard your raiding vessels. By which I mean, hang on, we need to, we need to get you slightly more raiding vessels. Though for some reason, everyone's decided now's the moment to rise up against me. Guys, I promise it isn't, I'm going to murder you. Right, deploy the forces of Anatolia to join up with the forces of Rome. They can handle this together, especially as you're standing on... Actually, you're standing on mountains. Okay, you know what? I'll send in the Croatians just for some further reinforcements. That's fine. I'm going to be honest, we just sent the ships out while actually sort of forgetting to load one of them. That is that is a thing we just did, yes. I'm not going to deny that. Okay, deploy the forces we did bring, regardless. We can begin dealing with all of this nonsense, and yes, indeed. Battle of Carthage, nice, easy victory. You guys are doing a bit of fighting, but only 9,000 of you. 
Okay, commensify the raiding, please. Lovely. And yes, if you guys would actually like to get on the boat this time, that'd be great too. So yeah, they're all scattered all over the shop, just for the moment. Okay, the raiding has now begun, and also the collection of a final little bit of money. Because once the raiding begins, yes, we should be able to gather maybe a thousand, two thousand gold, aside from whatever else we get from sacking the city directly. And yes, indeed, right now you decided to begin a holy war, and it's not going so well for you. Good. Good, 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 good. So we should be able to get away with some of this nice nonsense. Lovely and easy. And updated information here as well. Yeah, the supply limit around here is now up to about 21,000. I swear it was lower than that previously. And we've just torn down a temple in Carthage. Love it. Oh, and some of this territory is valuable, valuable stuff. Oh, this boat is going to have a lot of beautiful money in it. Oh, this is, this is going to be good. Okay, now here's interesting. Orpheus has come of age. The game didn't tell me because, yeah, he's not actually one of my children. He's uh, one of my children's children. Now, I can't help but be, you know, disappointed in his beard and lack thereof and all associated hair. But, like the great Julianus Vitinius before him, he is a bold man who might, in theory, be a good fighter. Now, stubborn. Stubborn is unfortunate and charitable isn't doing him much in the way of favours. Gregarious, that's working pretty well, all things considered. He is apparently groomed as well. Right, so he is a sexy bastard. Got it. In fact, the Queen of Anatolia would be willing to marry him right now, but uh, no, she's 44, so we're not going to get any children there. That would be a bad idea, and I could also marry him to Artemisia, who is his aunt, I'm pretty sure. So let's not do that either. Though I'm going to be honest, though that is a good education, in general, the stats are not that impressive. Give it just, I think it's like a month or something, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing Aphrodite also coming of age. At that point, things might start changing. Oh, and here's some good news. We can get siege equipment up to its next level. Good. Speed up the sieges. That is useful. That is really damn useful. And increase that tolerance, increase that construction. In fact, I'm pretty sure that construction lets me upgrade my all-important hospital. Move over to the hospital here. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hospital. Oh, that's really expensive. Okay, never mind. I'm fine with the existing hospital. That's, that's a okay. Okay, now this is looking good. This is looking very good right here. These are ongoing wars. And actually, there's another proper war going on here. There's... There's a Berber invasion. Okay, who's heading that up precisely? Ah, it's a Berber company. I don't know who you are precisely. Are you like a, a mercenary who didn't get paid? And thus you're now trying to invade Idrisid? Because if so, well done, keep it up. Okay, Aphrodite has also come of age. And the game didn't put a flag for that. But okay, come on, Aphrodite. Blow me the flip away, and oh my, ho ho, ho ho ho, we have a winner. Okay, um, how do we make this happen? How, how is this a thing that we make happen? Guys, guys, I have got the best cocky daughter in the world. Ignore Dionysius, all right? How about we all vote for Queen Aphrodite, sorry, Empress Aphrodite, that one. Everyone wants to vote with me, right? Because, actually, if their votes are divided enough, I can do whatever I want. Their votes are all over the place. I mean, guys, come on, just just look at her. For one second, that's not Aphrodite. Yes, that's Aphrodite at 175. Okay, so I've put some good votes over here. What we need to do is we need to find some young people and then bribe them, because I'm getting on a bit. I might die sooner rather than later. So, if I can just get some bribes in play right now, that'd be great, though. Hang on, just, just give them some time. Some people might just vote with oh, yes. Oh, flipping. No, that's, that's a guy who just, that's a guy who just died, but Artemisia is still, still there. No one's jumping over just yet, but okay. Thrace, Thrace just uh, died. Honestly, Thrace is the kingdom no one actually really, uh, cares about anymore because I made it a bit too uh a bit too small. 
Gonna be honest, yes, that was my bad. Also, flipping la -di da the king of Aquitaine thinks he should be on the council. Okay, the French bit of the empire is getting a bit ahead of itself here. Still, couple of minor tweaks, we are in good, good shape right now. I can push through anything. Oh, flip me. Oh, the votes are, the votes are at this point ridiculous. Aphrodite is ahead, but it's a tie. So I assume as emperor, I get the deciding vote, but... Bloody hell, wait, who the bloody hell is Helias? Oh, the son of Philotheos, of course, that guy, we all love that guy. He's got a double beard, well that's just cheating. No, 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 no. Who the hell are you, and where did you just... Where did you come from? Aha, Eris, before she was burnt at the stake when we sent her over to... Uh, Genoa, she produced four children, so plenty of them are just going to be dead ends because, yeah, the AI is not smart enough to actually get them into matrilineal marriages, but there was one child who was produced, a boy, Helias. Okay, so, right, he's now apparently, some people consider him the heir. I mean, he's, he's brave, I can see that's positive, and yeah, he's got a military education, in many ways, he's not that great. I mean, come on. Warrior princess, people. Warrior cocking princess. All right, let's 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 get some bribes. Here we go. There's some really cheap favors going around over here. So, uh, yeah, some cheap favors for only like uh, 70 or so gold. Yeah, it's the mid-tier ones. Those are the ones we want. So, uh, enough of them. We'll be able to uh, push this through. Who are you, by the way? Ah! You, you my good friend, buy a favour from you. That's only 200 gold. Right, buy all those favours. Great. We're actually making tons of money right now, so that's no problem whatsoever. So, we're just buying favours, left, right and centre. Orpheus? Okay, who started voting for Orpheus? Uh, right, that's more flipping like it. Everybody for the flipping nine. I don't even know how it was Orpheus. Ah, it must have been Orpheus because for a split second, everybody was voting for... Somebody who wasn't of my dynasty, so therefore... Okay, that's fine. Everything's under control. We're all going to be voting for Princess Aphrodite as our first empress. The warrior empress, Aphrodite herself. It's going to be spectacular. Okay, I'm going to be honest. We need to make this thing happen. And that means, okay, Hermes Blood Axe, you're going on the front line. I know you've put on a few pounds recently from all the biscuits, but... You are. You're going on to the front line. So, okay. How are the sieges going? You're almost done. That's just a trade post or something. Some more victories over here. Nothing too dramatic. That's just 200 people. Push your way past that. Don't bother with the rest of it. Okay. We've got to have some good money here. That's That looks like some good money. Almost two grand right there and like another 200 right there. Okay. So, about two grand total. We've got five grand right now, which is... Great. These coastal territories uh, have been ransacked. Threat is at 78%. If I wait for just, yeah, 3% more, then the pagans don't get involved. Or, or there is another solution. Threat goes down when you lose wars or release independent people. But the problem is you can't release independent people if they're de jure you. And the vast majority of my people are de jure me. So, okay, what's not de jure me that in theory I could just sort of uh, let go? There's a bunch of stuff right up here to the north, like Alania, say. We could just let Alania go. There's a bunch of stuff up here. Basically, all of this nonsense. I mean, there's the Yazidid. We could get rid of them. I'm going to say get rid of them. The thing is, once Rome is reformed, they're probably going to be straight back in De Jure. They're not De Jure right now, but they probably will become De Jure when Rome is reformed. That's... That's of interest. Yeah, that's worth minus 10% threat right there. This is the smallest nation we've got, and the thing is... It is nice and securely Hellenic, both in terms of leadership and people. So, there's a good chance we might be able to just invite them back in later. 
Okay, I don't want to give up the Yazidid, because, you know, that's pretty much in the middle of the empire. But, 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 Kurdistan. Okay, that gets me pretty much bang on the amount of threat I need to get rid of. And it cleans up some border gore. I mean, just, just look at them. Look at them right now. They're just hanging off the bottom of the empire. It's horrible. No, 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 no. Admittedly, there'll be a tiny tiny bit over here. But to be honest, one of my vassals will just go and conquer them again and bring them back in. So that's absolutely fine. That there, congratulations guys, you are going to be independent. Just have fun. Yes, there you go. Marvellous. Threat falls to 74.6%, meaning now every pagan in the world, if I've understood this correctly, should not be getting involved. That means I just need to take on Catholicism. Pfft, whatever. Then on top of that, the Islamic world. That's a bit more terrifying. But we've done it before. We can do it again. And the various Jewish super states. Now, they could be dangerous, but they're also a long way out of the way. It's going to take them a very bloody long time to get involved. So, yeah. If we're lucky, we should be able to deal with all of this before it becomes a problem. Oh, flip me, it's time. It's time for me to actually take on the world at like 75% threat and thus take on Catholicism and Islam at the same time without the benefits of a great holy war. Oh, this is... This could go wrong. And speaking of which, age is really starting to uh, creep up on me here. Yeah. It turns out I'm struggling to stay awake. So, uh, yes indeed. I am willing to accept help from you. That might make our relationship more positive. That's good. And, yes, my wife has a very good education. Good. Good, good, good. And, yes, we can either get myself some economic technology points or just go have sex. Yes, let's just go have sex. Let's get some children out. One more son. Just for security. Okay, never mind. It turns out that uh, my wife's the one who's a bit on the sick side right now. Food poisoning. Okay, uh, yes, get the doctor to cheer her up, though unfortunately that does mean fertility's gonna be down. Okay, do not divorce her just because she's ill. It's fine. Everything's under control. Alright, deploy boats back to harbour. There is a ridiculously large amount of gold to get a levy size up and everything. Boats, please break down. You're in harbour. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Everything is fine. We're ready to go. This is going to happen. I'm honestly, this is going to happen. It's not going to happen right now because I physically can't do it because I've got troops standing. Okay, just use the military tab here. Do you have any troops standing right now? Okay, just hired. That'll be, yes, the various guards I've hired over here. How are my retinues? That is... That looks pretty much in full condition to me. Good. So, wow. Almost 20,000 troops in retinues alone. 127,000. 12,000 from my domain. Wow, retinue 16,000 hired, 3,000 vassals, 95,000. Flipping love it. Okay, that's, that's as strong as we have ever, ever been. And now it is time for flipping war. And I can even give Zeta a great library for 25% tech spread rate. Oh, that's, that's just lovely. Right there, and... Okay, where are the extra troops from my marshal? Because I just boosted my marshal quite significantly. Oh, what the bloody hell are you doing organising the army? That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be training the troops. How long have you been doing that, you stupid bastard? Okay, there's the extra troops. But it's going to take a little bit of time to get them uh, to get them ready. Okay, maybe we don't deploy my troops immediately. But we need to go. Because these territories are now starting to uh, recover and regrow. And we need this to be a smash and grab, damn it. And, okay, seriously, now is not the time for you to open war with the Jewish super states up north. But, actually, if you want to keep them busy... No, this is exactly the time for you to do that. Yes, go, go, have fun, attack the Jewish super state. I don't care, it'll keep them preoccupied. So, yes, indeed, we could at this point declare an invasion... So, at that point, we would be going for the entire kingdom, plus literally anything else we can actually uh, keep hold of afterwards. So, yep, currently occupied holdings will be seized, vassals become our vassals, we would take ridiculous, ludicrous amounts of territory. 
So yeah, there it is at the bottom there. So I take all vassalize all titles in the actual Sultanate. So the kingdom moves over to me in full. But on top of that, any occupied territory also comes along. So anything I occupy over here or down over here, I could just if I wanted to, and I can stop them surrendering long enough, I could take everything. But honestly, that's... That's not necessary. We don't need to do that. Wow, I've got a lot of Kausas Bella right now. Uh, yes, all we need is uh, this territory over here. That's it. That's your lot. And the council... Oh, who'd have thought it? The council thinks it's a good idea, sir. But yes, as I was hoping for, it looks to me like uh, that does not include the pagans. So, oh, oh, oh. this is, this is going to be interesting. Okay, the plan is smash and grab. We have weakened their defences. We want to get in there and just absolutely trash them before they have an opportunity to group up or do anything. Just need the actual core of the war, Tunis itself, to fall within a matter of months before anybody can send reinforcements, even the Empire itself, because they're going to be slow. There's going to be deserts everywhere. This is going to be difficult. So, okay, this is it. One final holy war for Rome. Let's burn Carthage to the ground. Okay, so, the situation we're now in, we're actually at war with, yeah, basically all of these individuals round over here. Obviously, all of Islam as well. So, the east of the empire is going to be battered. That's definitely going to take a little bit of a, uh, a battering. Right there. That's going to be tricky. Then we have got ourselves, yeah, some safe buffer states up here. These territories are overwhelmingly pagan. So they're not getting involved. We don't need to worry about any of this. Then we get into, yeah, some of the small Catholic nations. They're not going to be a problem. Now, Germany, Italy. They're going to be more of an issue. England and Ireland might be, but it's going to take them time to mobilize. Some of the northern Scandinavian territories are going to be a problem, but honestly, plenty of them are still pagan. Doesn't look so bad. Okay, let's consider what we need to guard each of the frontiers here. So, the European powers are generally fielding only about 15,000 odd troops. I think Italy's about the same. Yeah, that's about 10,000. England, you're fielding about, yeah, about 15,000 or a little bit less. And you guys, nothing. You guys are doing very, very badly indeed. Okay. So, if I can just stop them coming together, about 20,000 troops should be enough to, at the bare minimum, hold off any trouble around the Northern Catholic Front. That should be absolutely A-OK. -okay. Then we have got ourselves, wow, okay, the Hashemid dynasty has officially become Arabia. I think that happened a little while ago, actually, but they've got themselves a new Sultana, absolutely marvellous, with 33,000 troops. Okay. The Abbasids are on 20,000, so a good 50,000 is coming this way. Now, I don't think we can really fight that directly, or rather we don't want to. That would be a waste of time. So the best thing we can do instead is, yeah, distract them, keep them busy, send small parties to just annoy them and try and chase them off as best we can. What's most important is, uh, yeah, overwhelmingly, we need to move over here and deal with this as fast as possible. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. France, I think your troops could be very, very useful guarding the north against Catholicism. Okay, Aquitaine's not really producing much, only about 5,000, 6,000 odd, but France slash Bulgaria, there's 20 odd thousand. You guys, pull yourself together, get into North Italy, defend it as best you can. So, France and Aquitaine are now spoken for. Their job is just to hang around in Italy and block up any problems that start to emerge. Okay, Aquitanian Revolt, it's time for you to just step the flip down, alright? We're just going to shut that nonsense down momentarily. Okay, 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 okay. The fastest group that we can actually get over to any of these cities, especially as, yes, yeah, some of them are going to be relatively easy to deal with, is going to be Sicily. Sicily can field about 8,000 troops immediately so we can get them straight over to some of the destinations that's all absolutely fine uh deploy the boats too please that is a lot of flipping boat so put them there they can effectively just ferry troops backwards and forwards nice and fast that's great and then all these misplaced territories are going to start being very 
very useful indeed. Because, yeah, Trebizond, well, that's miles out of the way. That's no use whatsoever. But look, there's a bit of Trebizond right here. So, Trebizond, we're going to call up your troops. We're going to start them moving in this direction. Straight away, move them down over there. Actually, maybe don't bother. No, stay where you are. Instead, we'll use some of the local navies to ferry you in the right direction. Venice, I'm guessing you're not providing... No, Venice just doesn't. They don't provide troops. It's not what they do. Don't even ask them to do it. Corinthia provides a good 5,500. Then we have got Croatia. Good 7,000 right over there. Alania, of course, can provide all its troops nice and close by too. You can provide 3,700. Absolutely flipping spectacular. And where is... Yes, you. You're technically part of Anatolia for some reason. So, then again, do I want to hold those guys back for now? Should I keep a handful of troops over here just to... Yeah, you know what? We should do. Anatolia is going to be summoned over here. They're just going to deal with some of this nonsense and just try and keep all of that busy. Thrace has got... Naff all these days. Sorry about that. That's That one was kind of my bad. So, uh, your thousand troops can just hang out with the Anatolians. I know it's not going to be enough to defend you. Sorry about that. But, you know, needs must. Uh, you've got plenty of supply right there. 6,000 troops of Antioch. Not terrible at all. And actually, Anatolian troops are on the field right now. Good. I think if the enemy walks into them... They will fight them, but oh, an Anatolian revolt. Okay, seriously, everyone who's in a revolt right now needs to basically settle the flip down. Should have done this before we declared war, but what can you do? Now, there are, yes, 10,000 troops of the Abbasids right over here, so we do not want to fight right over here. We want to move over in this direction. We want to stay out of the way, and also mercenaries. Do not forget mercenaries in particular. Don't forget the Holy Order. That's the good stuff right there. 10,000 heavy infantry. Okay, but on top of that, mercenaries. Mercenaries, mercenaries, mercenaries. Everyone loves mercenaries because you've already been hired by France. Great, that's by me. If I buy mercenaries, nobody else can. The thing about mercenaries is they're not my men. If they die trying to storm a city, I kind of don't care. So, yes, what we're going to do is we're going to hire a big pile of mercenaries, we're going to ship them over and we're going to use them to storm the cities on the coast because we can and also because, oh bloody hell, there's not actually that many of them available. Okay, we're just going to hire what's available. We're going to basically hire all of these troops. Yes, you, you, you. Congratulations, you've all been hired. So there's 44,000 odd troops there right now, though some of that is my own personal army, which I will hold back for now. Also, I really approve of the term Mega Strategos. Excellent. It just means great general, but I like it. So, yes, I would say uh, the Holy Lads, uh, together with the Mercs, they're just going to go and they're going to start smashing. Right, Wallachia, Epirus, Thessalonica, which is independent for some reason. Everybody wake the flip up right now. That's actually part of Trebizond too. We've already woken up France. We've woken up Corinthia. There's... Okay, um, why are you working for... Okay, this bit of Greece just works for Aquitaine. That's fine, I guess. Uh, okay, you're part of these guys. You're part of you're part of the Anatolian Revolt, but not for too much longer. That's absolutely fine. Then we've got ourselves. Yeah, we've already raised up the. No, we've not raised up the Armenians. Okay, the Armenians are going to help out with this part of the world. Only three thousand troops. That's not much to be perfectly honest, but just get over here and start causing trouble for the Islamic factions on this side of the map. I just need them to not march in this direction. Though, speaking of which, uh, yeah, there's someone over here. You guys just... How are you guys worth so little? Hang on, guys, what are you What are you doing? There you go, wants a few more anyway. You guys just get over here and start seeing off... You're not even going to be able to do that, are you? No. No, you're not. Good. Good, good, good. Can you do anything, actually? You might be able to do something over there. Okay, guys, just go over there and take care of, like, this bit of city. Just keep them busy. Distract them. Also, conveniently, Romaine's actually busy with its own holy war right now. That's going to keep it away from the main front. And it looks like... 
Okay, where did you get that many troops from? Some of them have been hired. Okay, you've still got some territory. Fair enough, I suppose. Right, just, that's fine. That's going to keep Romaine busy. In fact, a lot of people look a bit busy right now. Okay, all that's left then is my own personal troops. So, all right, let's get them up. Let's get literally everybody standing, please. One by one, everybody here. Not you, apparently, because there's bloody raiders. So, okay, fine, whatever. Ah, except actually, apparently you stand with, like, full morale. So, everybody just go over here. Reinforce these guys. Yeah, take out these stupid raiders. We'll raise up the rest of the forces over here momentarily. And then that's, yeah, that's it. Because we gave away Samos uh, some time ago. You guys actually do anything, by the way. No, you guys aren't doing anything right now. So, just, like, go over here and make yourself useful if you can. Okay, that's... That's a lot of troops. There's still 12,000 or so in reserve among vassals. I've hired 25,000. I haven't even raised up my own 9,000 yet from the actual core empire. And those are my elites. Those are the elite of the elites. Next up, boats. No one cares about boats being raised because of the reformed religion. So that's all absolutely fine. I'm going to be needing a lot of boats, by the way. So send me, yeah, 300 boats over in this direction to the Adriatic. We need to start splitting these guys out. We've already summoned the fleet of Sicily over there, however. Money to split them in two because, yes, those 500 boats, that is arguably, like, you know, a little bit on the excessive side, actually. And most importantly, massive ball, loads of gold, 20% bonus to morale. Flipping, I love it. Anyone would have thought we're just making this up and the more money you pay means more favourable omens. Love it. And, alright, this guy didn't want to be involved in the war, whatever. Okay, Mega Mercenary Company, they get on some ships. Holy Order, they get on a different bunch of ships. And then we have also got ourselves... 8,000 Sicilian troops ready to be the flipping vanguard. They should be walking into already weakened defences. Yeah, all they need to do is get past that first layer of defences. The rest then, they could just pretty much walk straight through. So the first layer has had time to recover. The rest have not. What's going on up north over here? You guys are on the move. France is doing its own thing, as is Aquitaine. I don't flipping know what they're doing. But you know what? It's fine. They'll keep them nice and busy. Romaine's troops are busy. The Pope has actually just had his ass handed to him by... Okay, um, just some random pagan -y lot. Okay, great, thumbs up, thanks. There's Germany, but honestly, what are they bringing? 5,000 troops flipping nothing. Bohemia's got Nafal. I'm pretty sure we kicked their ass not too long ago. The big thing to worry about is, yeah, over here, 10,000 troops entering my territory right now, but they don't know where they want to go. And the best thing we can do is, yeah, just keep them distracted. Move around here, just siege down some of this territory. But we need to take down this bit as fast as possible. Meanwhile, reinforcements are coming in. Big reinforcements. Plenty of them. You guys all in over here. Right, everybody on the boat. That's 20,000 men coming in from Croatia, from, I believe, Trebizond. And I think that might be the forces of Alania as well. Factor all that in, that's 40,000 men taking part in the first wave. 25,000 guarding the flank over here and various irregulars trying to just keep the Islamic factions the east distracted. That's the best bet we've got, I think. And uh, yeah, problems immediately because you guys need to come this direction, actually. I need you to come in this sort of a direction to avoid fighting these guys because there's going to be there's going to be trouble. Okay, everything's fine. And bear in mind, yes, the African nations are cool because they're pagan. So they're not getting involved. This is why we needed to free Kurdistan. Okay, troops now present and correct over here. Troops are starting to arrive from all sides, but it's going to take them time to mobilize. And my spy master has been redeployed to this position to provide intelligence. So this is good. You guys all locked up at the minute. Yep, there's 11,000 troops right over there. I'm just going to ship them over. That's fine. Uh, you guys go over to here. You guys go over to here. These 500 boats at this point come back ready to start picking up reinforcements. Now, I appreciate this is expensive, but we're going to get these mercenaries killed nice and fast. They're going to lose a lot of strength going over the walls. And at that point, we don't need to pay them anymore. So this is all going to work out. Now, the downside we've got is, yes, we've unfortunately got uh, trade posts all over the world that belong to us. So, 
as a result of that, yeah, those trade posts going down do actually count against us. And some of them are relatively vulnerable. Just FYI, those guys over there do actually work for us. Yes, they work for Aquitaine. All right, Holy Order, this is literally what you are here to do, okay? There is a Holy War as needs doing. We need to reclaim Carthage. Get the flip on with it. And mercenaries, same basic deal. Get ashore, kill those 89 guys, and then, yeah, we just need to wait for the actual morale to recover a bit. We captured... We captured somebody who seems to be vaguely important for some reason, so we'll figure out what to do with him later. Okay, so, battle's ending nice and fast. There's a thousand people here. Okay, the mercs, I'm happy to just basically toss them away. Just wait for them around to uh, go up a bit. I know there's going to be major losses, but bear in mind, yeah, we are so far ahead in siege check. It's great. So, uh, just getting over there. That's falling. Good. Getting over there. That's fallen. You, over here. Can you also begin? You're already basically through. Okay, the siege tech is really, really paying for itself right now. All of you guys I've got... Okay, who's voting for not the right person? People are behind... Okay, my marshal, who's just... He's just some guy. Okay, why are we voting for some guy? He's a nobody. We should not vote for... He's literally lowborn. Okay, it's a nice story, but I'm not having that, no. Especially as there are literally more qualified people floating around. So, my own court tutor will get on with this. Alright, he can do it. Okay, you're almost through that wave as well. Great. So, now at this point, we can start tearing them apart in seconds. Because these have all fallen. Up 64%. This is it. This is what we wanted. Alright, this is why we pre-vaded. Okay, get in there. And H wow. Okay. This is this is faster than I thought it was going to be. Three, two, one. And reinforcements do not have time to arrive. Everybody just get over the cocking walls. 99. Uh-oh. 99. Okay, small problem. In wars, they get stuck at 99% until some form of major battle has occurred. A battle needs to happen, but I don't know how the game defines major battle. Because, yes, we've not yet won a major battle. How big does a battle have to be? Alright, guys, where are your armies? Because I'm ready to fight them now. I see some forces over there, randoms that must have come in by boat. I do have my, yeah, my 28,000 down over here. These are the French forces. Move them to Genoa. We just need to need to catch somebody. Or we need to engage in some form of major fight. You're taking on these guys right now. You're taking out this. But victories against the actual target are going to be worth a lot more, aren't they? Presumably, yes. Uh, okay, so we need to actually find the, uh, the target. And okay, whatever this is. Yes, I've made a friend. Great. Love it. Thanks. Um, we need to find, you know, our victims and wait, what? Of peace and he's surrendering. He just surrendered. You absolute fool. If you just hid your army over here, I'd be stuck at 99% for the next two and a half years or something. And then reinforcements would have come piling in from literally everybody. So, okay, he's, he's just handed me. He's just handed me everything. And that means, okay. Well, 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 you poor, stupid bastards. Okay, guys, it worked. The smash and grab worked. I mean, okay, that was a little bit simpler than I thought it was going to be, but I kind of don't care because the plan worked. We pre-vaded, we weakened the defences, we sent in the mercenaries, we destroyed them. And with that, with that, with that, with that, oh my... What's that over there? Am I the Emperor? Do I have 3,000 prestige? Have I gathered together all of the most important bits of the Roman Empire and then like some other stuff? Like the Roman Empire didn't really go this far north most of the time and this bit over here is just cocky random as well. Basically, yes, I've improved the Roman Empire apart from like the, the bits that we, we don't have yet. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh my. 
Well, isn't life good and sexy and exciting? Okay, first I just need to click the Create New Vassal button for a bit. And just to confirm, there's Carthage down over there, in Roman hands, and on fire. Beautiful. And I think we shall dedicate a temple to Hermes at this point. No particular reason to. I've not got any plots on the go. Basically, it's just pure vanity. Oh, blimey. Some people are even now voting for Prince Dionysius, because apparently they don't recognise talent when they see it. And as for this territory, I would say, how about we make this the land of my dynasty? All right, so... Dionysius, you may have this random terrible bit of desert land that nobody particularly wants. Congratulations, my son. And you, Helias, who just sort of appeared out of nowhere, the commander of Cilicia and heir to the county of Noli, you may have this slightly more desirable bit of coastland next to the other guy. And as for Carthage, I'll just keep that for myself, to be honest, because why not, eh? When we put the fires out, I bet it's going to generate actually a fairly decent amount of money. Okay, the troops have stood down, territory has been handed out, domain limit is satisfied. It's time. It's flipping time. Folks, it has been great being the Byzantine Empire, but... But, 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 but... No. We need to go one step beyond. And as it turns out, Hermes has managed to hang on long enough that he gets to be the person who pushes the flipping button. With this, the Roman Empire is restored. The dawn of a brand new era. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. After a miraculous recovery of territory lost centuries ago, the Roman Empire has been re-flipping Born! Absolutely marvellous. So, I get myself a new nice title immediately. It turns out that I am Augustus. That's, wow, a free plus ten to all vassals. That's, that's really damn nice. And, okay, like, two and a half times more prestige than you get for being directly descended from Alexander the Great, which feels... That feels weird to me. I feel like that should be worth, you know, a bit more, the Alexander thing, but whatever. But yes, ruler of the Roman Empire, it's back. And even better, yeah, the Roman Empire's got some fun stuff going on here. And oh my goodness, Hermes is no longer Blood Axe. Hermes is the glorious, and he sure bloody is. You see, just in case between the Holy Wars and the Great Holy Wars and the once-in-a-lifetime invasions, I didn't have enough, you know, reasons to declare war, I've now got Imperial Reconquest. So, even though the map doesn't read it's de jure a part of the Roman Empire, because, you know, the other empires have to be there so other people can play the game, yeah, all of a sudden, I can reclaim huge, huge amounts of land. So, yeah, basically, it's at the duchy level. So, I can just claim all territory within a particular duchy. And uh, there's quite a lot of duchies. Basically, it's just a nice, easy way for you to uh, mop up Italy. Which is very, very bloody convenient indeed. Together with basically anything that was historically Roman. So, up in German, there's a couple of different options uh, over here. So, yeah, I can just basically claim myself a bunch of territory with you. So, yeah, basically, free infinite wars forever. Does that include parts of England, by the way? Depends on how you count. Yes, indeed. So, Brittany, Cumbria. Yes, absolutely. So, it's basically the greatest extent of the Roman Empire, because that was right up to, uh, right up to York. So, we are talking the full extent of the Roman Empire. So, uh, all of Spain, large parts of North Africa, Egypt, basically all of Central Europe and the UK. At this point, I have got, well, between that and invasion, the right to just declare war on everybody forever, which is, which is just magnificent. Oh, still Pontifex Maximus. Everything is great. Now, that, of course, is pretty darn good, but, 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 there's one more thing we have to do as the Roman Empire just, you know, leaps into life and begins doing some conquering all by itself. Croatia going straight after Bohemia once again, and to be honest, yeah, France and Aquitaine are going to very easily just eat up large parts of Western Europe over there. I would not be surprised to see Italy collapse in the not-too-distant future. Sicily will start getting some ideas. Corinthian Croatia will as well. I mean, France, sooner or later, is just going to eat everything. Because 
Imperial Roman France is just a ludicrous powerhouse. Oh, and I get a little golden wreath and everything. Oh, that's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. But, as I say, there's... There's one more thing that we do need to do. And for that, yes, indeed. We're gonna have to... We're gonna have to move time forward a bit because as glorious as he is, there is one thing, one crucial, all-important thing that Hermes the Glorious cannot do. Oh, but before that, yes, it turns out that, yes, Hermes the Glorious' final years are going to be, uh, interesting. We've got a couple of special Roman events here. So, uh, oh dear. Accusations of my predecessors burning Rome to the ground to hide their crimes. So maybe I should burn literally every temple in Rome. That strikes me as eminently reasonable. Yes, let's do that. Okay, so the Vatican has now been burnt to the ground, which is absolutely beautiful. So uh, yes, indeed, that is likely to permanently cripple the authority of the Catholic Church for centuries to come. Excellent. Good, good, good. Maybe they'll see reason and come back to Zeus. To be honest, it's still 32. That's not even that terrible. I've seen it at zero in the past. Oh, and they did mean literally, like we burnt the old temple buildings. Oh, okay. Um, right. Well, maybe we should like build different things here. And apparently I can... Ah, got to build one temple back again. Okay. Got a bit angry last night. Burnt the Holy See down. Sorry about that. Need to immediately build a new temple as it turns out. I can't stop thinking about the prisoners in my dungeon. They're at my mercy. What a thrill it would be to hurt them, to hear the sweet screams, to see the panic in their eyes. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes Roman emperors did end up like this. Yes, this, this is historically accurate. So yes, let's oil up the rack. Let's torture them properly, damn it. No half-ass torture in this empire. Also, we could just like, you know, sell them or send them home or whatever. That would be fine too. There we go. Nice empty dungeon. That's absolutely lovely. And oh my goodness, I could begin the Roman Renaissance, but the capital would need to be Rome. But Zeta, no, 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 no. That, that feels kind of unacceptable to me, but then Roman culture would start spreading across the empire. All right, in for a penny, in for a pound, but Zeta... As this is goodbye, and we're swimming in money, you know what? We're going to give Zeta a goodbye present. It may not be the capital anymore, but it's still going to be the most beautiful, wonderful place in the Empire. Yes, a magnificent garden. I am going to build the most beautiful garden in all the world. Rome may be the official political capital, but everybody wants to live in Zeta. There we flip and go. Also, I've just put our tech back like a cocking century. Right, didn't consider that was going to be a thing that was about to happen. But yes, yes we did. We've just put technology back so far. This here, this is why you don't get caught up on the idea of a romantic Roman Renaissance and accidentally cripple yourself technologically. But screw it, we're doing it. Hooray, Roman Renaissance! Ah, but as I feared, time is moving on doing its terrible, terrible dance. I am becoming old and starting to lose all of my virtues. Uh, the decline has begun. Ooh, two bits of good news. So one, my wife is pregnant, I've still got it. But two, when I go to war, I get a fancy Romany style helmet. That's lovely. Yep, screw you, you stupid bastards and... Uh-oh. Um, okay, so I seem to have um become possessed. Well, that's harsh. Okay, that's that's not good, I suspect. Though apparently it makes me better at fighting, so that's nice. Oh, here come the Christians. Oh, please stop murdering us. We don't like being on fire. No, shove off. Roman, Greece, Zeus, forever. And yes, as I suspected, don't worry about the border gore. The Armenians have immediately jumped in to, you know, reclaim Kurdistan. And the child was a daughter. And though it does not suit what we've been doing so far, we shall name her Romula. Like Romulus, but you know, feminine. Time goes on and yeah, here's a breakdown of the actual culture. So right now, Roman is in the minority, but you can see there, just like, yeah, having a proselytizing religion, it's starting to spread in all sorts of uh, weird places. So uh, as time goes by, Roman will start to become dominant. Oh, and flip me. This is just the perfect 
perfect ending. So it turns out that, yep, this lad down over here, he wants... Oh, he's 69. That's... that's old. Okay, I'm gonna help you convert to being, you know, properly Roman and whatever and Hellenic and all that, but... Okay, we need to do this fast, because you do not have much time. And then they immediately revolted, possibly against the Hellenism. Hang the flip on, hold the flipping presses. I'm gonna be honest, I was all ready to wrap up this series, but... But, 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 what's that coming over the hill? Oh, it's Genghis Khan, so... Okay, you want a flipping go, Mr. Oh, I've got some horses. Oh, you know what? You know what, mate? It's flipping on. It is flipping the flip on. Because you know what I've got waiting for you? I've got the biggest army in the cocking world. And more importantly than that, I have got a gosh darn warrior queen ready to take the reins. Because I'm going to be honest, Hermes has lost it a bit. So yeah, time's running out for him. But... Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to give this series a slight, slight extension because coming up next time, Warrior Queen Aphrodite takes on Genghis Cocking Khan. That's, that's a sentence I wasn't expecting to say. Right, as it turns out, more of this to come next week, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you join me for that because Rome has been restored, but now it needs to be secured. The Empire will take on the Mongols and... Uh, Oh, this is going to be... I'm guessing this is going to be bad. Right, we'll see how we do with that very, very soon indeed, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Crusader Kings 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, come the chariots! Yeah.